This video is brought to you by CuriosityStream, and before we begin here, guys, this video does contain some explicit language, as well as gratuitous amounts of jazz, so uh, viewer discretion is advised. What the fuck did you just fucking say about me, you little bitch? On April 24th, 2020, the YouTube channel Vocal Synthesis posted an audio file of what sounds like the rapper Jay-Z delivering the Navy SEALs copy pasta, that classic vintage internet image board meme. Now, in order to get this deepfake audio, the owner of the channel used the neural net Tacotron 2, which is able to replicate subtleties of human speech, including volume, speed, and intonation from simple text. Yes, everybody, they thought in the future we would have flying cars, but no, we have... I love you know I graduated top of my class in the Navy SEALs And I've been involved in number of secret raids on Al Qaeda And I have over 300 confirmed kills I train in guerrilla warfare God bless. This Tacotron model was likely trained on Jay-Z acapellas, which is why it sounds like Jay-Z rapping. But it does not have any of the salient musical aspects that we would normally find in hip-hop music, namely a steady pulse, and any kind of rhyme or rhythmic scheme. I love you know I graduated top of my class in the Navy SEALs, and I've been involved in number of secret raids on Al Qaeda. But there is something kind of musical about it, or rhythmic about it, or something there. At least that's how I'm hearing it. I'm hearing some kind of musical ghost in the machine happening here with this neural net interpretation of the Navy SEALs copy pasta. Maybe there is some kind of underlying musical order here. I asked my friend Chris McCarthy to listen to this deepfake acapella and try and orchestrate it. Hey, I'm Chris McCarthy. I'm a pianist and composer living in New York City. Chris has this project with drummer J.K. Kim called JKXCM, where they deconstruct hip hop classics by playing along to acapellas and turning them into jazz. It's like reverse hip hop where you have the rapper and then you're creating a new instrumental instead of somebody freestyling over the instrumental. Since he has all this experience with real acapellas and reinterpreting music around them, I thought it would be fun to try and reinterpret music around this fake acapella. I have over 300 confirmed kills. I train in guerrilla warfare. And I'm the top sniper in the entire U.S. Armed Forces. You are nothing to me but just another target. I also asked my good buddy and friend of the channel, Josh Bailey, to listen to this acapella and try and transcribe it into Western notation to see if we couldn't find any underlying musical pulse. Dude, it's like someone painted a Jackson Pollock and then we had to paint the same Jackson Pollock. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kinda. This style of music making sounds very similar to the speech melody music of composers like, say, Hermeto Pasquale, whose music mimics the tones and the rhythms of the human speaking voice. But you, dear viewer, are probably much more familiar with this style on the internet, with artists like, say, Mano Neon and Publio Delgado, and of course, the meme master himself, Charles Cornell. And bitches will be like, oh my God, but why God? She's the fucking stripper, she's the ratchet. Even when I, even when I got walked. I'm curious if doing this musical interpretation on deepfake audio with that uncanny valley translates into kind of, I don't know, an uncanny musical rhythm. So at first I thought I was gonna try to write out something that matched the pitch like Mono Neon does, or Meta Pasquale, whoever. Every rapper sort of has the, you know, the range their voice sits in. That's a, a worldwide emotion, right? Everyone wants to root for the underdog. I don't know if it's because it's AI, but to me, I would try to pick pitches out and it was much harder than if I was trying to transcribe someone just talking. You were nothing to me, but just send out the target. I would wipe you to fuck up with precision and likes it, which has never been seen before. I just tried to listen to it until I could recite the whole thing along with the recording, like I was learning lines from a play or something. You think you can get away with saying that shit to me, go for the internet. And then once I had the rhythm down, I was just improvising pitches. I know what the rhythm is, and then I'm gonna let my fingers do what they wanna do. It's more just I'm like reciting it to myself in my head, and then my fingers are just trying to keep up with my brain reciting it. Languages fall into one of two rhythmic categories, stress-timed languages and syllable-timed languages, and also mora-timed languages, don't worry, 
sorry, I haven't forgotten about you Japanese. English, generally speaking, is a stress-timed language, where stresses are usually organized in regular pulses. Which is why the clapping meme works in text. You, as an English speaker, generally organize your speech into regular pulses. Consider, I'm the top sniper in the entire U.S. Armed Forces. Part of what makes up the uncanny valley strangeness of the neural net is that the AI Jay-Z does not deliver this line that way. And I'm the top sniper in the entire U.S. Armed Forces. Instead, it is delivered more syllable-timed, like the French language is, where short syllables are grouped together and long syllables are grouped together. So the stress patterns are not as immediately obvious, so it's harder to feel the beat in the words themselves. The rhythms seem to be more based on the relative rates of notes rather than the relationship to any underlying pulse or a grid. In other words, you can't do the clapping meme to that kind of rhythmic delivery. And I'm the top slapper in the entire U.S. Armed Forces. And so when we try and translate these rhythms into Western notation, which is fundamentally based on the idea that there is an underlying pulse to which you can relate rhythms, we get some pretty wacky results. I guess you could call these syllable timed rhythms so yeah. i'm thinking of it like tickets at one two three four five got it Makes so sense. it's like four chrono triplets that are just hocketed off of this beat yep okay Makes that's sense. how i yep. thought yeah <laughs> yeah now i get it i wrote like a fake set of notation as if it was in time just to approximate the ratio of the speed. This seven tuplet is not actually an eighth note seven tuplet. So it has the feeling of a seven tuplet without so, actually being a seven tuplet. So I approached this chart with literally thinking rhythms don't equal rhythms, they equal ratio of speed compared to what else is in that phrase. It is completely inaccurate in terms of correct music notation. So like, Software, hardware, <laughs> hardware. And so like sometimes something would feel like it's in a triplet rhythm, but there's five notes. It's five notes and six notes, but they're all 60 note triplets. Oh. Uh. Is it important to make a chart that has that written correct in terms of where you feel the beat? Or is it important to write something that my eye would glance at and play a rate of five notes that is the correct rate. Now there are existing styles of music that are based on this kind of rhythmic structure. You might not have a steady pulse, but rather relative rates of speed measured on a gradient from slow to fast. Traditional religious music, like say Gregorian plain chant, does not have a steady pulse. You'll also sometimes have this unmeasured approach to rhythm in opera music with the technique of recitative, where singers will sing with the irregular and faster cadence of speech to deliver more exposition in between longer musical numbers. <laughs> There's also the aggressive and rather strange modern classical technique of Splachstimme, which exists somewhere between speaking and singing. But to me, the medium that I guess best approximates the cadence that the AI delivered the Navy SEALs copy pasta is spoken word poetry, that poetic delivery style that vaguely mimics hip hop swagger, but with none of the encoded beat and none of the embodied musical rhythm that hip hop music normally has. And it's not true to who's inside us because we've all had bad thoughts, but they don't have to define us. In other words, the neural net is great if you want to hear Jay-Z do spoken word. You speak, I'm contacting my secret network of spies across the USA. And your IP is being traced right now, so you better prepare for the storm. Thank God, the storm that wipes up the painted little thing you call your life. You're fucking dead, kid. I can be anywhere, anytime, and I can kill you in over 700 ways. And that's just with my bare hands. Not only am I exclusively trained in an arm combat. Like, if I'm playing just a groove, there's this like fifth band member that's the beat that we can all play with and it's there's a level of confidence we all have. You don't have the benefit of that with this because it's always moving. So I was like, okay, I just need to decide to be confident in the, at, in the rate of the rhythms I've like designated to myself and then just attack it the way I would a downbeat that I know it's coming up. When I'm learning acapella tracks that 
or to a grid. That's one thing, but I do it pretty much the same way. I just listen to it until I could like play the rhythm. With this, there's no grid. So it's it's just sort of phrase by phrase. I tried to do it with maybe a sentence or, or two at a time and then slowly put it together. One very cool thing I found out about these syllable timed rhythms is that if you pair a groove with them, no matter the tempo, you will start to hear those syllable timed rhythms in relationship to the groove's pulse no matter the tempo of that groove. The audio of the fake Jay-Z in the following example is not speeding up or slowing down. It's just kind of an auditory illusion based on the groove that you're hearing at the time. I love you know I graduated top of my class in the Navy SEALs and I've been involved in numerous secret raids on all quite I love you know I graduated top of my class in the Navy SEALs and I've been involved in numerous secret raids on all quite I love you know I graduated top of my class in the Navy SEALs and I've been involved in numerous secret raids on all quite I love you know I graduated top of my class in the Navy SEALs and I've been involved in numerous secret raids on all quite Super cool, right? Well, it turns out if you simply speak using elongated vowel sounds on top of some kind of groove, your brain will start to hear the relationship of your speaking voice to the underlying pulse. Unlike the real Jay-Z, AI Jay-Z does not conform to a grid, but you can kind of make him sound like he is when you pair him with a groove. When we decided it was gonna be this thing, I just looked up a ton of stuff. And basically the drummer videos that do this, there's always moments that have like a little snippet of a groove, which is like one cool way to surprise the listener because it's like, oh wow, that part of this speech all of a sudden sounds like there's a groove behind it. Because he broke the rules. Oh, bro. We didn't say any rules, did we, Charlie? Wrong, sir. So I knew I wanted like three or four moments that were like a groove. You know, at least it, like, I feel like two bars is enough to make you feel like there's a groove here. I need my exclusive training, I'm on combat, but I have access to the entire arsenal of the United States, my recall. And I will use it to its full extent to wipe your miserable ass off the face of the continent, you little shit. If only you could have known what I'm hardly retributing, your little clever comment was about to bring down upon you. Maybe would I held your fucking tongue? If you could, you didn't, and now you're paying the price of goddamn it, the yacht. Oh, well, shit, fury all over you when you were drawn in it. You fucking dead. Get off. So, yeah, this is what I've spent the past couple of weeks doing. Why, why, why? There definitely is not any grand underlying musical order, even though the AI was probably trained on Jay-Z rapping and there is musical order to his rapping. But if we listen to the result musically and try and interpret these rhythms on our instruments, we get something that I think is fairly rewarding and sounds really interesting. My undergraduate degree was in classical percussion and there are a ton of percussion ensemble pieces that are written out to the note. And they, there are some very old ones, like uh, ionization is like the most famous one. When you listen to it, it might as well be this. When you listen to that piece, it might as well be this. If you listen to me in isolation, it does not sound related to anything. Silences are what gets me. It's like. I don't know. I like the idea of playing free with limitations. Too bad. And so you have to simultaneously focus really hard and not really give a shit what you're playing at the same time, which is what I would like to ideally do when I'm improvising on a standard. I think just having the rhythm be the, the, the inspiration for what you're improvising is a really cool way to come up with new stuff because you can't phrase anything in a pattern you already know. You have to just go off of what the speech is giving you. Honestly though, it's pretty difficult to interpret these musical rhythms on our instruments in any kind of precise way. I'm so used to feeling a pulse as a musician and to not have that pulse there, it takes a long time to really internalize these rhythms and make it feel musical. Honestly, that's what we did with this on a micro scale. I don't know about you, yeah. but I just repeated the phrase, every little part or every longer part until it was right. And I did it over the course of like three days. Well, this was pretty damn complicated. It was a few weeks of like trying to listen to it when I was just walking around to just get it in my bones. So I felt like I just could recite the whole thing even without 
any cues. Throughout this whole process, I couldn't help but think that it would be actually very cool to have a text-to-speech program that did encode some kind of pulse and rhythmic information in the result. Sort of like, I don't know, like a Vocaloid for rap. Think about how useful that might be for a producer or a musician. Just type in what you want and out comes a usable musical result. That might be a very creative tool. Now, you might notice that in this video about Jay-Z rapping, I didn't actually include any audio of Jay-Z rapping. And there's a very good reason for this. On April 28th, 2020, just four days after the initial copy pasta was uploaded, Jay-Z's label Rock Nation issued a DMCA takedown to the Vocal Synthesis YouTube channel, presumably because the audio of the deepfake Jay-Z sounded too similar to the actual Jay-Z. The ethics of this to me are very interesting because hip hop as a genre was based initially on illicitly sampling other musicians' audio and then recontextualizing it into new forms of musical expression. This is something that Jay-Z himself has actually been sued over. But this deepfake artificially generated audio is a little bit different than that kind of copyright infringement. And its implications go beyond simple musical expression. It's all kind of uncharted territory. If only there was somebody out there who could help us understand this just a little bit better. Oh, hey, it's Devin from Legal Eagle. What are your thoughts, man? So it's probably not copyright infringement because you're not using the original expression, the original recording, although it's certainly not cut and dry. Who knows, copyright is uh, incredibly complicated. But the bigger issue here, I think, is something called misappropriation of likeness, where just because it's not technically copyright infringement doesn't mean you're allowed to go around making it seem like people participate or endorse things that they did not participate in and did not endorse. And here, it sounds like Jay-Z. You're using speech patterns that only exist in the way that he raps. And so it sounds like he participated in this particular rap when he had no idea. So under a lot of states' laws, there is a claim for misappropriation of likeness where you're using someone's likeness, whether it's their face or their mannerisms, or in this case, their speech pattern, in a way that they never approved of, and <laughs> you might be liable for it. Awesome. Okay, well, thank you so much. That definitely helps. I don't ever want to confuse the real Jay-Z with the fake Jay-Z in this video, and I certainly don't want Rock Nation going after me and my channel with DMCA takedowns and copyright strikes. Well, fortunately, there is a place where I don't have to worry about that, and that is over at my streaming service, Nebula. In the extended version of this video available exclusively on Nebula, I break down how Jay-Z raps on an acapella of the track 99 Problems and compare its musical aspects to AI Jay-Z reciting the Navy SEALs copy pasta. Kind of going up from a G sharp up to a B and then resolving down to an E. There's some really interesting parallels to be made there, and I can do that over at Nebula without having to worry about this fair usage of copyrighted content. Nebula's not just me though, it's a really great place to watch and discover quality quality content from some of your favorite YouTube educational creators, including Legal Eagle, thank you so much for the cameo, my man, Thomas Frank, Polyphonic, Up and Atom, Wendover Productions, 12 Tone, and many, many other excellent creators. This video and Nebula is supported by another excellent streaming service, Curiosity Stream, the go-to source on the internet for the best documentaries and documentary series, with thousands of titles to choose from. If you sign up for Curiosity Stream right now with the link in the description or curiositystream.com slash Adam Neely, you'll also get a Nebula subscription for free. What's more is that for a limited time, you'll get a year of Curiosity Stream and Nebula for just $14.79, a 26% discount. By signing up to Curiosity Stream with the link in the description, you're not only helping out this channel, but the greater educational community here on YouTube as we build a platform for thoughtful content that engages the world in a meaningful way. And yes, that includes playing jazz alongside of artificially generated copy pasta memes. I guess. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you just want to watch us perform the copy pasta meme that's been uploaded over at Adam Neely 2, I've edited out all the talky bits. It's just the meme in its pure, pure form. So go subscribe over there. Subscribe to me here if you haven't already for more music theory nonsense. And uh, yeah, this was quite a fun project. So thank you so much for watching, everybody. Peace.